Hey, what's up? I'm going to be talking about distractions today. So what are distractions? Distractions are things that take you away from the work that you want to be doing. Now, something that's a distraction in one context might not be a distraction in another context. For example, YouTube. YouTube can be a great tool for learning. If you watch a, you know, educational stuff on YouTube, great, awesome. Uh, if you're watching YouTube to avoid working on an art project by watching documentaries, not so good. Not, not the worst, not the worst way you can do stuff. And in fact, that's, that's one okay, it, it's a good middle step for improving your productivity is productive procrastination. So when you're procrastinating, well, okay, so maybe you're not getting started on the assignment, but maybe you're watching documentaries instead of jerking it to porn. Better, right? It's better to procrastinate with a documentary, right? It, it's better. So it's, it's a step in the right direction, but ultimately we want to get to the point where we're just doing the work, okay? So how do, how do we get to doing the work? Well, why aren't we doing the work? Journaling, I find, is really helpful. And yes, that's a form of procrastination, but I, I do find it's a very effective way of getting over those. Because a lot of times what's keeping us from work is these subconscious thoughts that we don't want to acknowledge. It's like a fear of what if I do it and I screw up or it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary. So you need to get your brain into a place where you're, you're aware of the subconscious thoughts, which might just be laziness. It might just be, I don't want to go because it hurts. But what that journaling does it is it'll remind you of your long-term goals, right? Because when we're in that place of procrastination, we're in a place of immediate gratification where we're, uh, I don't feel like it because it's uncomfortable, but we're not thinking about 10 years from now what, what our life is going to be. Because if we just binge watch TV shows instead of working on our art, then we're not going to be professional artists. Now are we? <laughs> right? We're not going to be great artists. We'll be mediocre artists or not artists at all. Right? If we don't do the work, we won't get there. But a lot of times our brains will trick us in the moment. So you got to it's 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 about getting in touch it's about consciousness it's about mindfulness being aware of why you're distracting yourself what pain are you avoiding because a lot of times that that distraction is just avoiding pain and it's not the thing itself you might think you have uh you know whatever uh porn addiction you might think you have a social media addiction you might think you have a you know whatever or you might not even think you have an addiction you might just be justifying it under some sort of uh, noble guys, right? Like, uh, you're not distracting yourself, you're educating yourself by watching the news, right? But maybe the news is actually a way of avoiding the problems in your own life, and you're instead focusing on problems you have no control over, so you absolve yourself of any responsibility, and you just get to rrr, get angry at the news, or get angry at people on social media, because those things you can't do anything about, which doesn't place any responsibility on you. So, Anyway, <laughs> I've found the most that when when distractions melt away for me are when I'm filled with a strong sense of purpose and I'm really engaged in the process. And so embracing curiosity is a big one for me. So when you're on social media, you're curious, right? You're on social media. You're like, what does this link do? What does this link do? What is this? Well, who did he said what? Right. That's all curiosity. So if you can harness that curiosity and put it towards the thing you want to do, that's really good. And take the same approach as you do with social media, where you're like, take a little step here, right? Do you go into social media with the idea that I'm gonna spend two hours on here? Probably not. You probably go in like, well, let me just click that one link. Well, let me just click that one link. Let me just click that one link. So maybe approach your work in the same way. It's like, let me just do a little bit of work on this, on the nose. Let me just draw this nose. And then maybe you say, well, how does the bridge of the nose go? And then how does the bridge of the nose bridge of the nose uh, work its way into the eye socket. How does, how does that connection work? And then maybe you say, well, what's going on with the eyelashes? And just kind of open yourself up to how curiosity, right? Learning about this stuff and really getting interested in art in the same way as you would about social media where you're investigating and, and, and tapping into that inner child of just like asking questions. Why, why does this work this way? What is this shape here? Does this shape look different on different people? Uh, what, are the, what is the eyebrow shape? Why are eyebrows shaped like this? You know, 
And you might just write down those questions for later if you're actively drawing. Maybe don't look up research stuff while you're drawing, but just think about this stuff of like, why is this shape? And you can look that up later. Or you can just look at different people and draw different people's eyebrows and think about like, oh, this is this this part of the eyebrow is raised on this person or whatever. You know, so it's just tapping into that curiosity. The other thing is this, let me get something. So, and actually, I've got this book by my bedside too. This is a good one to mention, High Performance Habits. Uh, the first of these habits, so there's six habits in this book. Uh, seek clarity, generate energy, raise necessity, increase productivity, develop influence, demonstrate courage. And so seek clarity, the first of these habits, I think is, is, is something to look at. It's High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. Burchard, I don't know. But I would get that book, I would buy it, it's really good. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily buy all the guy's stuff. I, I like him. I like some of his videos, but it's like any of these uh, uh, self, self-help things where there's a lot of stuff you don't need to buy and they're just trying to get your money, but there's also a lot of good advice in there. So the book I think is worth buying. So I'd pick up that. As far as all the other stuff, I can't speak to it. Maybe it's good, but I find with like Tony Robbins and all that, there's also a lot of fluff that they're just trying to you know, sell you stuff. So just get the book, I would say, and maybe watch some of his videos. So anyway, one of the things he talks about is this sense of purpose. You can't see this. It got whited out. But uh, Peter, you're doing this because it's important. Remember your students. You can inspire them and help them reach their goals. That's your purpose. Do good for them. You're going to love this, and you're going to help a lot of people. So I'll read that when I... I got that from the book. I just replaced it with my name. And... Uh, well, it just helps connect you with your sense of purpose, right? For me, the purpose is not to create amazing paintings. For me, the purpose is to help people and live my best life. And I really want to teach. So I know for a lot of people, people want to be artists. They don't want to be teachers and teachers just like something that bad artists do. But I really want to teach. I really like teaching. I really like being a mentor to people and explaining stuff to people and helping people. So that's what I want to do. So when I feel disconnected from that, that purpose, I tend to get lost and I tend to get distracted more because I've lost my inner fire, I guess. Or it's just going off in all directions, right? Rather than when I'm focused on, I want to be a good teacher and in order to be a good teacher, I need to be a really good artist. I need to learn this stuff so I can be a the best teacher I can be. I don't want to be teaching my students the bad things, right? The wrong things. I don't want to be irresponsible in that way. I think that's uh, sad. <laughs> Honestly, it, it, to, to end up as that would be a failure in my eyes for myself. For other people, fine, whatever, do your thing. But there's so many crappy teachers out there, I don't want to be one of them. I'm sorry. It's one of the most frustrating things you see is really bad teachers. Just, you, it's like, it's like giving a person a potted plant, right? You give a person 12 potted plants and they just let them die. That's what it's like to see students go to a bad teacher. It's just like, here's a whole bunch of uh, little s fledgling artists, right? A bunch of, let's call them baby birds. They're baby birds. You're giving a person baby birds and then they just stomp on them. <laughs> or it's like they've never read a book on baby birds or they've never taken care of baby birds before. Uh, they don't know anything about baby birds. So they don't know how to take care of the baby birds to help them grow up into beautiful birds that fly away and have successful art careers and live happily and you know all that <laughs> so i just i feel like being a bad teacher is the worst thing you can do like better to not teach at all than to be a bad teacher right they your students would be better off with no teacher if you're a bad teacher but anyway i'm getting distracted <laughs> hey what do you know i got distracted so what do we do, right? That's a, that's a good example. I just got distracted on this tangent, right? So what do we do? Well, we just bring ourselves back. We bring ourselves back to what we were talking about, which is avoiding distractions. I think meditation's a really good practice for that because it teaches you to, to get in touch with your breath. And it's okay to let your mind wander, but you're just bringing yourself back to your breath. If anyone wants to know good resources for meditation, first of all, if you're out there saying, I've tried meditation and I can't do it, I'm calling bullshit. You can definitely do it. It's easy. You're just being too hard on yourself and you're being too rigid with what your I, concept of meditation is. So you can definitely do it and there are resources. I will I will let anybody know who wants to, uh, 
wants to get into meditation and thinks they can't do it, you definitely can. Just maybe not the way with what you think meditation is. But what I guess what I'm referring to more is just sitting with your own thoughts. Getting used to sitting with your own thoughts. Because a lot of times distractions will be shutting out those thoughts. So if you can get used to sitting with your own thoughts and feelings and being okay with that and saying, okay, I feel some discomfort. I feel some pain. I feel some uh, humiliation. I feel some embarrassment. I feel frustrated because I'm 30 years old and I still can't draw, you know, all that stuff. Get okay with sitting with it. That'll help a lot with distraction. Getting that stronger sense of purpose, that'll help with distraction. And just get curious about that art. Get curious about it. I don't really have a definite answer because I'm still working through this issue. Maybe I'll... I don't think the answer is discipline. People say the issue is, oh, it's discipline. you got to be disciplined. But I don't, I don't think that's the answer. Right? That's like a very Jocko Willink style that I think works for those harder personalities that just... Grrr, like, you know. But I don't think it works for me. And I would guess it doesn't work for a lot of artists. I would say enthusiasm is a lot better than... In fact, I'm going to plug Chu Jitsu. C-H-E-W-J-I-T-S-U. Even if you're not into jujitsu, Chu Jitsu is... It's a guy who's a uh, black belt and former MMA fighter former pro MMA fighter who talks a lot about mastery and the journey to learning something new. So we'll talk about his experience as a white belt a lot, which and he talks about his journey all along the way. So even if you're not into jujitsu, it's a really good channel for just listening to while you draw or picking you up. It's there's a lot of overlap between jujitsu and art. So I would even if you're not into martial arts or anything, go check out Jujitsu. He's got a YouTube channel and a podcast. So check out both those, and I totally forget what I was <laughs> talking about. Oh, right, enthusiasm. That he, he talks about enthusiasm over discipline. He doesn't really think of going to jujitsu class as, I'm going to go to jujitsu and be really disciplined. He just enjoyed it. He just enjoyed jujitsu, and so he, it didn't feel like this huge burden to him. He was just enthusiastic about it. So... Try to get enthusiastic about art. Reconnect with the things that brought you to art in the first place. And just try to balance that out a little bit more. Give yourself a little bit of time every day to connect with those things. Don't spend the whole day distracting yourself with stuff. But carve out a little bit of time every day to watch anime. Or to, you know, whatever. Watch Naruto fights. Or to... You know, play Dungeons and Dragons, or write about Dungeons and Dragons, or listen to Dungeons and Dragons. Just try to connect with the things that brought you to art in the first place, and that'll help a lot, I think, with uh, generating enthusiasm. So, yeah, I think enthusiasm is the way we beat distractions. Don't think of art as, like, this boring thing you have to do. Get enthusiastic about it, but also have the power to... But don't rely on enthusiasm, I would say. Use that discipline... Right, so say say you have a few say you have like two discipline points a day, right? You start the day maybe like say two. You have two discipline cards. And if you use your discipline cards on things that you could have generated enthusiasm for, then that's kind of a waste. But if you say, Alright, I've got six units of art and four of those I can generate enthusiasm for but there's two that I just can't muster any enthusiasm for, right? There's like this stupid lion that I'm working on and it's boring and it's just rendering and it's hard and it's difficult. And then there's figure drawing, which is hard and difficult. If you can't muster up discipline for those two, that's where you want to put your discipline points. You don't want to spread your discipline wide into things that you could have generated uh, enthusiasm for. I hope that makes sense. That you generate enthusiasm for all the things you can generate enthusiasm for and save your discipline for things that you really need to use discipline on like oil painting and try to do those things first thing in the morning when you can just knock them out and then be done 
The other thing, the only thing I'll say is look into habits. So The Power of Habit I've heard of. I haven't read that one, but The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, I think, might be a good book to look at. Look at And Atomic Habits is a good book to look at. I have read that one, and that's a good one. And then what I'm reading right now is uh, Real Artists Don't Starve. I'll let you know how that one is. It seems really good so far, but Real Artists Don't Starve. So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts today. Habits are important too. I maybe I, I've probably got other videos about habits, and if I haven't, then I'll I'll do it in the future. But habits are really important, and that's a lot of you know what distractions. Actually, one final thing I'll mention: get all that crap off your phone. The notifications, the apps for social media, get it off. If you want to go to social media, do it in browser on your phone and turn off all notifications for that crap. That's the biggest thing. Get your smartphone out of your room. That's a big one. I can't believe I didn't mention that. In fact, that's because I, I, I don't have a problem with it, so I don't ever think that, oh yeah, some people do that. But yeah, if you do that, if you have your phone in your room while you draw and you've got the notifications on, uh-uh, uh-uh, we put our phone in airplane mode, okay? Put your phone in airplane mode so you can't get internet. If you need to listen to something while you draw, like a podcast or YouTube or something, if you're just like rendering and you're listening to something, download it. Put your phone into Wi-Fi mode. You don't want to be getting texts. You don't want to be getting any crap like that. That's a big one. So that's that's my advice. All right, I'll end it here, and that's it. All right, goodbye, everybody. Hope that helps or that you're, you know, enjoying watching me talk about random crap. <laughs> All right, bye, see you. Love you.